Tis the season. The holidays are coming up. This year is almost at an end. Thank God. And for some of you fourth years, the deadline to apply for most residencies is coming up. So you have an important question to answer. Is optometry residency worth it? Should I even apply? Let's dive into this topic. Hey guys, it's Dr. Andreas here. If you're new to this channel, my goal is to help optometry students, residents, and new doctors with optometry related topics. If you like the video, please consider hitting the like button below, subscribing to the channel, and now onto the video. Disclaimer, I did do an ocular disease residency and it was at the Orlando VA Medical Center. It was awesome. I am pro residency, but this video is a combination of my opinions, some of my colleagues' opinions, and a result of considerable research that I did online and while scanning ODs on Facebook and ODs on financial planning for posts relating to questions about whether to do a residency. So use this video to hear all the pros and cons, because there are a lot of both, and make your own informed decision based on your situation. Let's get started. First, we're tackling the pros, which will hopefully convince you to at least apply, because you can still apply, go to your residency interview, and still decide not to do one if it's not for you. Or you could go and realize some of the benefits of doing a residency. First and most obvious, clinical experience and mentorship. You will see a lot in that one year. Your teachers may even tell you that one year residency is equal to three to five years of clinical experience. And there may be some merit to that statement because during your time at the VA or the ODMD practice or at a hospital, you may be seeing patients that have a lot of pathology or brain injury that needs VT or need specialized contacts, which all is valuable experience on its own to have as a new doctor. Not only that, but you're able to see such a large volume of unique patients with your mentors on call for advice if needed. It's like a phone a friend, except your five friends are all top tier doctors who have been training residents for years. Unsure of what blood work to order? No problem. Is this tricky case of glaucoma progressing? They'll point out the one detail you missed. Is that clearance enough on that scleral lens fit? Second opinion. So picking your preceptor's brain in those situations, which you may not be able to do if you're at a solo prior practice, is super beneficial and is done in an environment that is different than an externship because you are a doctor. So you are given all the independence to see patients, but also get the extra education if needed. One of my favorite things to do as a resident is after I saw a patient with condition X, I would ask my preceptor later that day, what would you do with that specific patient if, if they also had condition Y? Or what if you presented it in a different way? What would you do? When would you bring them back? And I still hear their voices sometimes when I end up seeing my hypothetical scenarios come to life. Pro number two, more opportunities. This one is actually a big deal, guys, because doing a residency can open many doors for you. As optometry becomes more medical, more employers are seeing the value of residency and is often a requirement for ODMD, academia, VA, and some other hospitals. I was actually offered the opportunity to apply for a job at the VA before my residency ended. That opportunity would not have been there had I not done a residency. Also, sometimes you don't know what life will throw at you. I've met people who have graduated and not done a residency and want to switch jobs, but their options are limited because they aren't residency trained. So a residency is definitely a resume booster. You can also use a residency to make more money. When negotiating for full-time, part-time, even fill-in work, you can definitely still use a completion of a residency to your advantage to negotiate a higher salary or higher benefits. You have more expertise and you worked so hard doing that residency, so you can now see that your time is worth more than average pay. Another point to consider is that your preceptors are doctors who have connections with other doctors who can find work for you. Just a simple example is that sometimes I'll fill in at our Costco in Clearwater, which I love working there. It operates like a private practice and they have an OCT, and I only knew about this place because the doctor there is friends with one of my preceptors in Orlando. You'd actually be surprised at how small the world optometry is. And in my residency, I had 12 preceptors, so we definitely have some resources available. Pro tip number three, mood lighting before your career starts. Since residents don't make a lot of money, one common practice is to do occasional fill-in work, like at America's Best or Target, for example. It doesn't have to be very often, since residency is already demanding, but even two Saturdays a month could be over a grand a month or over $12,000 a year. Not only can moonlighting lower the income burden of residency, it can actually give you the chance to work in different environments before you have to commit to a full-time job. You can see if modalities such as corporate or retail are worth it for you, or if you would rather work for company A versus company B. Even some private practices will take fill-in work, as I got to work at the practice that I'm now employed at uh, nine months before I was even hired. You can also see how each of your moonlighting places operate, uh, which can get you enough business input to determine if you want to own your own sublease after a residency. And of course, there's more networking to be done the more places you work for. 
I occasionally also fill in at a local practice in Tampa, which I like, and I only got the chance to work there because I worked once at a Target in Clearwater. And I got to work there because a doctor that I moonlighted for in Orlando connected me there once you realize that I'm moving to Clearwater after residency. Of course, you can definitely do all this stuff once you're out of practice, but moonlighting during your residency gives you the opportunity to practice optometry in the real world without making a commitment or feeling like your career is at a halt. One last big pro of residency, and this is a legitimate one, confidence. It's not a question that the first month of post-graduation can be very stressful. Some doctors will still come out there and kill it, but others may feel very unprepared. Maybe you didn't get the experience you hoped for during your rotations. Maybe you're still not efficient enough to do 20 minute exams. And maybe you wanna be able to refer less and see more complex patients, but want to really get talented at ocular disease or specialty contacts before you do so. If you feel like an extra year of residency will significantly boost your confidence as a doctor, then go for it. If you feel like you just need to be thrown into the real world after graduation and you'll be fine, then confidence is probably not an issue for you. This pro is highly dependent on how you feel by around this time as a fourth year. One thing to consider is that the more comfortable you are at managing tough cases, a skill that could be earned during a residency, the longer you can keep those patients in your office instead of just referring. The more referrals you get and the more medical revenue you will generate for your practice. The future of optometry is medical and is why uh, people often speculate that residencies may eventually become mandatory. Okay, so now that we've covered a ton of benefits of doing a residency, let's tackle some of the cons. And you already know what this first one's gonna be. Con number one, less money like a lot less. <laughs> According to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median salary of an optometrist in the country is around $115,000. As a resident, I made just under 35K, which not only is that over three times less money, but after taxes, that 35K turned into a net of 25K. Some of you watching are probably like, all right, I'm gonna head out. So when you consider this difference of $80,000 that is not going towards your loan, which is increasing by the day if you forgot, or that money is not going towards investing, then the opportunity cost of being a residency is actually over $100,000. This is why so many residents do fill-in work because one day of working in the real world, just one day, is often equal to just about one week of residency pay. Everybody say it with me, that's, that's messed, messed up. up. Con number two, your potential prospects are backed up for a year. This may not apply to everyone, but for those who have a job lined up after graduation, some since before they start optometry school, a residency may not be ideal because your employer might not want to wait that long. They may be in dire need of an optometrist and could simply hire someone else instead. Or worse, she could sell her successful practice that is in the perfect area near where you want to live to someone else. A residency may be deemed even less important if that employer is able to act as your mentor. An example of this is, let's say you're going to work at your dad's practice after you graduate. Why do a residency when you can just ask Papa for guidance on anything crazy that'll walk in your door? Papa has decades of optometry experience. Why do a residency when you can get paid doctor money to just bother your Papa? All joking aside, doing a residency can be fantastic, but it does require you to graduate a year later, which may not be in some people's best interest. Con number three, academia is just not for everyone. I like academia. I like giving interesting case presentations, looking up cool articles for journal review, getting quizzed by my preceptor on hard cases, or going to academy for some free resident CE. What I just described may be some of your least favorite parts of the optometry school. If that's the case, a residency may not be the best for you, especially if you're absolutely done with preceptors. Academia also means hard work. While residencies can certainly differ in structure, you're often spending long days in clinic, and then you have all this academic work that you have to do during your minimal free time. It's not for everyone. Luckily, this homework was very reasonable at Orlando, and we were out of the clinic by four, so it was definitely a good choice for hashtag work-life balance. While academia is great, one thing that it does tend to ignore is things like business, coding, insurances. For example, you may not be able to freely order as much special testing as you would normally do in an academic setting because of insurance. You may not be able to bring the patient back for follow-ups as frequently as indicated. The eye drop that is the standard of care for the condition you want to treat is probably too expensive, or insurance won't cover it, or you'll get a phone call from the pharmacy a week later asking for an alternative. You might code a 9T code for an exam that qualifies for a 99 code and thus miss them some extra revenue. These are all things that, if you're going to do a residency, you should keep in the back of your mind. Last con, to put it simply, residency is not required to be a great doctor. It really isn't. It's just a way to get more experience in a specialized setting. One alternative out there is what people call a pseudo-residency. That's where you get hired at an ODMD practice uh, because you see a lot of disease, you're around other specialists, and you still make pretty good money. One of the comments that I read during my research on this, on this video was from this guy that did a pseudo-residency, and he said something that made a lot of sense. I feel that my experience has been invaluable and I've been paid well at the same time. 
Residency may be beneficial for research or academia, but just working, seeing a lot of patients, and putting in the time to do your own learning goes a long way. And that is so true. Even if you don't do a pseudo residency, you will get a ton of experience in your career regardless of where you work. At the private practice that I work at, I saw two corner ulcers in a two week span, which is crazy to me because I had never seen one in optometry school. At Costco, in just two days of moonlighting, I saw central serous, retinoschisis, and juvenile uveitis from arthritis. Basically, you will get exposure to a lot of interesting cases throughout your career simply because you're seeing so many patients every day. The only difference with the residency is that you're put into a position where you can manage these conditions way more frequently and with more resources at your disposal. Which is awesome for some, but for others, it might just not be the worth of the cons of doing residency. I mean, let's be real. If you see something in the clinic that you're unsure of how to treat, what do you do? Oh, one second, I'll be right back. All right, Salzman nodules, Salzman nodules. Look at, let's look at the index. Solgeman nodule, Solgeman, S. Okay, it's not on here, that's weird. Okay, let me just look. Okay, Solgeman nodules, okay. 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 All right, so you have what's called Salzman's nodules, and I don't worry, I see it all the time. It's actually pretty simple to treat. And there you have it, folks, the pros and cons of doing a residency. After thinking about all these factors and talking to so many people about it, it just seems that the doctors that did a residency liked it and advocate for it, while the people who didn't do residency are equally happy that they did it. So at the end of the day, only do it if you ultimately think it's right for you. And if you're still on the fence, just apply and see what happens. If you go to an interview and love the residency site, then do it. If you apply and later realize residency is not for you, you can just walk away. I'll end my video with some input that I have reflecting back on my own residency. Even with all the cons, I don't regret it. I definitely learned a lot during my time in Orlando and I greatly value my experience and the relationships that I built with both my preceptors and my co-residents. I still keep in touch with all of them. Sometimes one of us will pretend that we're still residents and post a crazy case in the group chat and that's always fun. With that said though, working out of residency has been rewarding in itself and the paycheck mwah, is just so nice. And that's all I got guys. Like and subscribe if you want, help an OD out and uh, hope you tune in next time. Happy Thanksgiving guys and happy holidays.